What's up everyone? Welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. Now we said in a previous video that Dr. Maxfield and I, we don't live near each other anymore. So we're gonna be making content in many different ways. One way is we're actually gonna meet in person at least once a month to film content together. Another way is shooting hybrid content. And the third way is just making content separately. But we are dedicated to continuing making content. And this video today is a hybrid video. You'll see what I'm talking about later, but let us know if you like this. Let us know if you hate this. Let us know what you think of this hybrid model. This is gonna be our first hybrid video today. Today, we're gonna to be talking about retinol. You thought you could escape us talking about retinol. You thought we'd stop talking about retinol. Never gonna happen. Even if we're living separate, you're still gonna get retinol videos. And today we're answering some of the internet's most searched retinol questions. So we're gonna do this video similar to what Wired does, kind of a little Wired-esque video. So we search Google for the internet's most asked retinol questions and we're gonna be answering them today in this video, does retinol thin the skin? What's the difference between tretinoin and retinol? Can you wax your eyebrows if you're using retinol? You ask us a lot of these questions in our comments, so hopefully we'll be answering some of your questions today. Answering the internet's most asked retinol questions, here we go. Here we go. First, shout out to Kiehl's for sponsoring this video. Kiehl's has been making amazing skincare products for over 100 years, and they did not have their own retinol product until last year. That's when they came out with their microdose retinol, which we talked about in several other videos. Today, we're gonna to be talking about their new retinol. So shout out to Kiehl's for sponsoring this video and supporting education on the Dr. Lee Skincare channel. So first question, what is the difference between retinol and tretinoin? Okay, we get this all the time. So first, to answer this question, we have to go back to what is a retinoid. So retinoids are vitamin A derivatives. They are essentially the family or class that all the rest of these retinoids fall underneath. So retinol is a type of retinoid. It needs to be converted twice by the skin, once to retinaldehyde or retinal, and a second time to retinoic acid in order for it to be active. So you apply retinol to the skin, it's converted twice to retinoic acid, and then it acts on the retinoic acid receptors to actually have an effect on the skin. Then you have other types of retinoids like adapalene and tazeratine. Tretinoin is another name for retinoic acid, which means it doesn't need to be converted at all by the skin in order for it to be active, but it's only available by prescription. So you can't get tretinoin over the counter, you really need to go to a physician who will then prescribe you tretinoin, which is more active. Now there was one study that compared retinol to tretinoin and they showed them to be similarly effective with less irritation from retinol. But that being said, there's more data on tretinoin. It's the most studied form of retinoid, but again, it's only available by prescription. So for the next question, what is retinol used for? And this is one of those ingredients, it's actually kind of difficult to answer that. It's more like, what is this ingredient not used for? Because it's the foundational cornerstone ingredient for both acne and anti-aging, which helps it find a home in most everybody's skincare routine. Not only does it help with all of the steps of acne, it helps with pretty much everything anti-aging, from fine lines, to texture, to dark spots, to wrinkles, to collagen growth, and maybe even helping minimize the appearance of those pores. So what makes it so incredible for both categories? So for acne, it actually works on all of the steps. It helps to decrease oil production. It helps to normalize keratinization, which is also going to help decrease the clogging of those pores. And although it doesn't directly kill bacteria, like something like benzoyl peroxide, it does help create an aerobic environment that the bacteria can't actually thrive in. So it decreases the bacterial role in acne. And then lastly, not only because of all those first steps, but it also directly helps helps modulate the inflammation of acne. So it works on every single step. And then for anti-aging, once again, it kind of seems to work on everything. So if we just even look at just dark spots, if you go back to our dark spots video, we have a table and it shows retinol working on multiple parts. It decreases the pigment production through inhibition of tyrosinase, decreases the transfer of pigment from the melanocytes or the pigment making cells to the skin cells, and it increases skin cell turnover, which helps get rid of the pigment once it's deposited in the skin. That's like a very unique thing that almost only retinoids can do. And then moving past just dark spots, because of how retinol works with collagen growth and normalizing keratinization, it helps with like everything. It helps with decreasing wrinkles, minimizing the appearance of pores, it helps with improving texture, overall homogeneity of tone. It pretty much acts anywhere a single other ingredient possibly could. Plus with 
all of the things I've mentioned, there is just so much evidence, decades of evidence supporting each of these points. This includes lab-based studies, biopsy-proven studies, clinical studies with endpoints from anywhere from one month to a year to multiple years. So physiologically and data from the real world, this just makes retinols incredibly unique, incredibly versatile, and just a cornerstone gold standard treatment for a lot of, lot of, lot of skin conditions. Next question, how to start a retinol. So we've answered this question several other times. A lot of the times that people have problems with retinol is because they start either too aggressively or not aggressively enough. So the way that I've recommended to people on our channel is the rule of threes, which for the first month, you're gonna use it every third day. On the second month, you're gonna use it every second day. And on the third month, you're gonna use it every day. That allows your skin to get acclimated to it so you don't have as much irritation. Another thing that you can do if you have really sensitive skin is the retinoid sandwich where you apply a moisturizer first, you apply the retinol above that, and then you apply another moisturizer on top of that. That really helps to buffer it to avoid irritation. Another thing that's really helpful is to use only a pea size amount. One thing that people do is they just apply too much. So you take a pea size amount, you dot it evenly over the skin, and then you spread it over the surface of the face. We did a previous video on our favorite retinols not too long ago, and I'm gonna link that above so you can go watch it. But ultimately, we talked about our favorite starter retinols in that video, and the reason we mentioned starter retinols is because they're less irritating and lower concentration so that your skin can get acclimated to it. And one of our favorite starter retinols in that video was the Kiehl's Microdose Retinol, which slowly releases over time microdose amounts of retinol so you don't get that irritation. So if you're looking for a starter retinol, that's a really good place to start. And you can watch the rest of our picks in that video above. But if we're gonna talk about that as the microdose starter retinol, then we have to talk about Kiehl's new product, new product reveal, drum roll please. This is the Kiehl's Retinol Fast Release Wrinkle Reducing Night Serum. So this is their stronger form and it's a really interesting formula you won't see a lot of this in other packaging, but I'm gonna show you how to use this because this is very different than any retinol we've ever shown before. Now, in addition to improving texture and fine lines, this one in studies has actually been shown to improve deeper wrinkles and the elasticity of the skin because it's stronger than the other ones. All right, so let's watch how to use this one because it's pretty cool. So one of the issues with retinols is actually not a very stable ingredient and it does degrade over time, right? So if you have a retinol in a package, every day that you have that package open, the retinol concentration is decreasing in that package. It's still gonna be effective, but it's gonna be less effective than when you first bought it. So for this one, they have a retinol powder that you actually release into the retinol base to make it active. So you open this retinol powder here, and then this is the serum here. So I actually did read the instructions on this. This is my second time doing this because this is my second bottle, but ultimately what you do is you flip the bottle upside down, you open the pouch, and then you twist the retinol capsule into the bottom of the bottle. All right, so don't mess this part up because I made a mistake last time I opened this. The retinol serum part, the, the bigger part here, you're gonna flip it upside down, leave it flipped upside down here, and you're gonna twist off the bottom cap. Then what came out of the silver packaging is right here. You're gonna screw that into the base. Then what you do is you actually push down on it to release the powder into the serum. You can actually see this happening, and there you go. And I actually saw the powder just drop right into the serum there. And then what you do is you shake it vigorously. Shake, shake, shake. This is gonna create that emulsion there. And then that way you have your retinol serum. So it went from being completely clear and now it has more of that milky white appearance. You wanna make sure you get all that powder out so you're getting the most active ingredients that haven't degraded at all up until this point. Okay, so then I'm gonna take that off. This thing is amazing. And then basically you screw back in that original cap. Now you put it right side up. You take off the cap here, you hold it upside down, and there's actually a little plunger on the bottom, a little black plunger. You press that button and it releases the perfect amount of retinol into your hand. And then you take a, I'm making a mess here, of course, but you basically take that pea size amount, you, you dab it evenly over the skin so that you make sure you're not missing any parts, and then you smooth it into the skin. 
I can get that into my beard, no problem. And there you go. The retinol fast release from Kiehl's. That's how you set it up. That's how you use it. Super unique formula. They're putting a powder into the liquid in order to keep it as stable as possible for as long as possible. Now, if you are a retinol beginner, you can use this one. It is a little bit stronger, but like I said, again, ease into this one every third day, then every second day, then every day. I'm a retinol pro at this point, so I have no irritation with this product at all. The serum actually has a few other ingredients that I really like, like glycerin, panthenol, and adenosine. Make sure to check this out. Super cool innovation from Kiehl's. So the next question, does retinol thin your skin? Um, nope. And there seems to be like a very strong misconception with this one. So let's take a step back and just think about the skin or even look at a picture of the skin in general. We have a couple of different layers. We have the epidermis, which has its own sub layers, but this makes up the topmost portion of the skin. And then we have the dermis, which is a little bit thicker and that this is the deeper portion of the skin. But the reason I want you to look at this is because when we talk about retinols and retinoids, they increase and affect multiple different structures within the skin. And this includes things like type one or type type three collagen, but the end result is actually an increase in epidermal thickness and also over a longer period of time, an increase in dermal thickness. So it affects both of the layers of the skin, positively helps with growth. And this is actually what accounts for a lot of the clinical results you see, how it evens out texture and then how it helps with fine lines and wrinkles and just gives it the kind of that overall healthy appearance to the skin. But that's not actually it. So retinoids actually go further. They normalize epidermal growth. So not only in a person who needs a little bit more volume to their epidermis and dermis, for someone with psoriasis, they have an over exuberant amount of skin cell growth, which is why their psoriatic plaques become thicker and thicker and thicker with a lot of scale heaped up on itself. Retinoids actually normalize this. So once again, it can add volume for someone who needs volume, but it actually can help keep skin and skin growth in check in a way that for psoriasis and possibly even some early precancerous lesions, it actually helps inhibit excessive growth. So it's just, it's incredibly unique mechanism where it helps to regulate something positively, almost no matter which side of that spectrum you are on growth. Next common question, and we actually neglected to answer this question in several other videos we did on retinol, but the question is, can you wax your eyebrows when you're using retinol? This is an important safety question. So like I said earlier, retinol actually decreases the skin cell stickiness or cohesiveness. So when you're using wax, not only does it pull up the hair and the root of the hair, but it also lifts up a little bit of skin with it, which is why a lot of people get redness and irritation after waxing their eyebrows or waxing any other part of the face. Well, when you're using retinol and your skin's less sticky, you can actually pull your skin up if you're waxing. So we do not recommend waxing while using retinol. If you do want to wax while using retinol, you have to stop for at least three days maybe sometimes a week if your skin is more sensitive. You don't wanna wax while using retinol the day before. That being said, there are other safe hair removal methods that you can use, such as threading. So threading doesn't actually pull on the surrounding skin, it pulls directly on the hair. It does lift it up at the roots, so you're gonna have the same benefits as waxing, but you're not gonna have the same risk of it pulling on the skin. So if you're using a retinol and you don't wanna stop like me, then go for threading over waxing. So the next question is, how long do I have to use retinol to see results? So this is one of those things where it takes patience. It seems like good skincare is actually kind of like life. Good things take time. So we can think about this in a couple different settings. For anti-aging, a lot of the studies do show benefits as early as four weeks. So at one month, sometimes people will notice a lot of improvement or significant improvement at least with texture, tone, and the overall appearance of their skin. Now beyond that, a lot more studies take these things out to two to three months. And in general, that's like a common endpoint where you see a good bulk of results from using a retinoid. But further than that, more benefits can even be had from using a retinol over the course of a year or six months to a year. And so how long might it take? A person can see results from the anti-aging perspective within a month, but it's also one of those things where if you look at a picture a year from now, you look back and be like, oh, wow, my skin actually looks better now than it did a year ago. But it's a subtle transition, especially in the anti-aging setting. It's a subtle change that not only helps that skin aging process, helps reverse some of that damage. So on a daily basis, it's hard to see the gains, but over a breadth of time, it's actually very significant. And then for acne, just like a lot of other acne ingredients, the best results seem to occur within that two to three month window. Results and improvement is definitely seen all along the way, but overall two to three months tends to be that meaningful endpoint where you see a pretty 
pretty decent difference for both acne and anti-aging. Thank you all for tuning in. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think of this hybrid model. We're definitely gonna be doing more videos in person. Not just that, but let us know what you think about this internet's most searched questions. Let us know if you like that format. And if so, let us know what video we should make next within this topic. As always, we greatly, greatly appreciate you and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you all so much. We love you.